I find that many people really struggle with how to do page layout with CSS. So I've created a really basic HTML page. We've linked to our external style sheet, <coughs> which is completely empty. Here, here it is, nothing in it. And I've created a HTML page that has a container, a header, and a side and an article. And you can see these in here. Now let's work on the page layout a bit. We're going to start by redefining the body tag. And all I'm really going to do here is just set the background color so that you know where each piece is as I'm doing layout. So we're just going to make this something dark. It's going to sort of fade into the background. There we go. So the whole body is gray. It's overshadowing or seeing through the other areas. The next part is the container. And this to me is one of the most critical concepts. So we've got the container. And the container is an ID for a div tag. And since it's an ID, we need to use that hash mark. And we're going to, again, set the background color in this. And we'll set this to something light. So you can see that's our container. And I'm going to again set colors for each of my other options in here. I have the header. We'll give that a background color. And I have an aside. I have an article. Now what this should show you is that there is automatically some formatting going on here. They don't automatically appear right next to each other. And I haven't done anything to put in non-breaking spaces or anything. So there's either some padding or some margins going on here. We can check this. like this. And when you use the inspect element, it will tell you how everything's being done. So it's automatically getting a margin at the top. This is our content. This is our padding. This is our border, this is our margin, and this is where the next content would be. So it's automatically giving us a top and bottom margin of 18 as the default styles. It's good to know what it is because we're going to take control. This here is referred to as the box model. Every element will have content at the center working your way out. It's content, padding, border, margin, and then your next element would be in place. So you need to try and remember that order. But if you forget, you can always go and look at the box model. So we'll come back to this when we're done to reinspect it. But that's what we're looking at right now. This is how it's set up. I'm going to go back into styles. Now the first thing that I'm going to want to do is I want to make the container 
constrain the page to a specific size. So I'm going to do that in a couple different ways. I'm going to put in a minimum height of 400 pixels. And I generally prefer to use the minimum height rather than the height because this allows it to grow if you have more content in it. But you generally don't want a page to be too short, so that's a good attribute to set. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the width. I'm going to set that to 600 pixels. 960 is the normal one. I just want to make it actually appear here. I'm actually going to do 500. Largely because I want you to see that it comes in left aligned with a bit of a margin around it. Okay, then I'm going to set a specific margin for this. And I want margin. And I'm going to exaggerate what I normally do. I'm going to do a 20 pixel top and bottom margin and then auto for the sides. What that's going to do when I click over here is it's going to increase the spacing here and it's going to center the container. So this is defined as the minimum or the margin for the top. There's a margin for the bottom since it doesn't go to the bottom of the page. It will grow past that. That's more of a minimum and then it will automatically center it. And if I were to resize the page, it would stay centered. So that's what the auto function does there. I'm going to put a border on this, the border style, solid, border width, Border color, and we'll make it something that really stands out. Okay, so you'll know that that's the container because of the border here. All right, so we have a header section. We're going to set the minimum height here. to 75 pixels. Okay, You can see that it automatically is getting some spacing here. We're going to put the, and that changed because I actually have HTML code in here. I accidentally hit enter on that. You can see that that appears in the article. I accidentally put in a blank line by hitting enter. Didn't want that. Okay, so I've got my minimum height. Let's just refresh that. And then let's put padding. And if I do 10 pixels, that will surround the entire area. So that makes it actually get rid of things. And this whole area in here, you can tell by the color what's taking place. Now if I want to show you how the box model would work again here. I could have a border style solid border width 2 pixels and so that shows you paddings inside the border and I keep accidentally hitting enter there. And then I need margin two pixels. If I just put that in, it should go all the way around. It's a little hard to see. Let's put four pixels. And the color will show through from the body there. So that's my header. Now the aside should come over to this left-hand side here. So that, I'm going to put a width of 125 pixels, and then I'm going to put in a 
again, I'm going to do a minimum height of 200 pixels. And then I'm going to do something that's going to make a lot of difference here. I'm going to float it to the right. Now watch what happens. That makes it float over to this side. Now for the article, I'm going to set a width to 375 pixels. Okay. Now I actually probably want to do this at about 371. And then I'm going to do margin 2 pixels. You want to make sure not to get too far. If I, went, if I went overboard with this, they wouldn't be able to fit next to each other. Depending on how you display it, that's working okay. Sometimes you'll force things to wrap when you don't want them to. See my container width is 500, 125. That that can be screwy when you get the widths too far together. You don't want to have them overlapping like that. It can cause problems. It depends on the browser. allowing it. It shouldn't. Be careful about sizes. Okay, and I want to show you that I can change direction on this. And let's do this as 571 pixels. And see there, we broke it. It goes outside the border. So my container has a width of 500. I'm wondering if it's sliding behind the aside. You've got to be careful. You want it to be less. So we're going to go ahead and put it back down to 371, which should be OK. Now, if I wanted to, I can float this one to the right. And that actually shows you the full thing. It was sliding behind the aside. Got to be careful with stuff like that. Let's put a margin here so that they're even. It's the perfectionist in me. Oh, and look, the margin makes them bump so it won't wrap there because the margin goes the whole way around. So I've got to subtract from the width here those two pixels or it breaks. Maybe I need to go further. Careful with your math because it's on each side. Let's try that. There we go. Be careful. You can break things easily. Okay, so we're going to put in a minimum height here of, let's see how tall my header is, 75, minimum height of 400. Let's make this one a minimum height of 320 pixels. And there you go. Again, too big, so you've got to check these. You don't want them to go past your edges here. So you're going to play around with this. Now this is just showing you where the different things are laying out and how it can cause problems. When you do yours, I want you to have an aside on each side, an article in the center, and a footer. And make each one a different color. Make sure that you don't go outside 
your bounding box, and you can make the whole box bigger if you like. Standard width is 960, so you can do like 960 by 600. But I want you to play around with doing layout using CSS and do it this way where you're testing it as you check each one and make it a different color. That really shows you where everything's going. And you need to be careful because if you were to add a footer here, so we're just going to go ahead into the HTML and at the, before the end of the div, we're going to put in a footer. And then I can put in a footer here. And we'll set it with a background color. Pick something I haven't used. And then we're going to want to set a minimum height. 75 pixels. And let's take a look here. Let's make this one a little bit smaller. Oh look, see how this is floating to the top? Notice it's behind here. You can see it coming up behind the article. We want to actually make this work a little better. Clear the float. Look at our code here. Let's make sure we've got something in it. And see that's how it's doing funky things here. You've got to be careful when you're using your style sheets to make this work. Let's try having this one float left. That brings it down here, so it's floating up against that. So you've got to be careful. We may want to clear Let's try. Let's try if we do nothing here, it just shows the whole one. Let's try float none. Okay, because we want to make sure that this is actually coming beneath those. Float. Right? Gets it there, float. left, gets it there, and this is where we go out and check how to clear it so it works correctly, CSS, clear float, float right, float left, Clear both. Okay, we can try that with the clear property. I was doing it wrong. So instead of float, we want clear both. And that's what I'm looking for. Again, it takes a little bit of playing with this, and I'm still not completely happy with this. I can fix it by setting margin to px, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just because we've got a minimum height here. So you can play with layout, but you really want to understand how things float, how to clear them, how to put things where you want. And I think that the easiest way to do that is with just colors and no content. Content I find confusing when you're when really trying to teach the layout portion of CSS. So you're going to go through and you're going to add a footer. You're going to have another aside. And I want you to do <coughs> so that you'll actually end up with a three-column layout here a little different than what I've done, but not a lot different. Use your own colors. 
and I'm not worried about content. It's okay to label each piece, but I don't want you to have anything beyond that in it. And go ahead and work on doing some CSS layout. It will really help you understand how this works going forward. <clears throat> 